representative data, this is going to be less than, um, these are actually squared. Uh, this is going to be 2 times Virginia strong squared over, over L, which is less than or equal than epsilon. So for, for any direction I want to approximate, I'm, I'm off by most of the epsilon times to, uh, on B for B. And this is, again, this is true because if I can't, every time I subtract something, I subtract it along these T different orthogonal directions, which, and, and only the ones which are directly, the components directly along T are affected, uh, directly along X are affected. The ones which are orthogonal to x are not affected, but I need to spread it out a bit. Right? So by doing this trick where you subtract off the smallest component, then you can, you can say that this, this incremental technique of, of maintaining the SVD is going to have a nice error. Um, and this works, you know, pretty, this is pretty easy to implement in, in practice. So the, let's see, the, the total time here is going to be um, O of N times um, times L squared. Um, the size is going to be um, sorry, this is T times T squared. So this, so this is going to be equal to O of N over S long squared. So the size is the runtime. So this, so this is going to be the time. So the time is still going to be um, have this epsilon squared term in it. But the, the, but the number of dimensions I need to keep is going to be independent of n, and it's only going to be um, based, based on epsilon. Do you have it after some reduction? One of those sigma values get computed. So if the sigma value, if sigma t plus 1, this is going to be the smallest sigma value. So all of these will still be non-negative. Right? They could be the same. and then. If this, if at the start t plus sigma t plus one is already zero, this can happen if the new point lies in the subspace of, of Q already. If it already lies in the subspace of capture, then I don't even have to subtract it. I already have a t-dimensional subspace which captures everything. Yeah, but it might happen that the further steps, when we reduce that sigma t plus one from other values, one of the previous sigma values so yes, so one of these could become zero. Well, the, 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 uh, um, that's okay. I now have a less than a t-dimensional substance. So I have instead of, you know, it, it could be that instead of um, instead of a one dimension, instead of a two-dimensional subspace, I now only have a one dimension left. And that could have been if the, if if you look at this data, right? It lies very close. You know, it lies very close to this one dimension. And I may have subtracted off. <coughs> so if I look at the these um if if I draw vectors proportional to the sigmas, right? This one could be much larger than this one. And maybe I have a new point that's a little bit off the board here. So then I have a third vector which is coming out. And I need to subtract all of these, this vector by an epsilon of this much, and or by a sigma t plus one. So maybe this is sigma t plus one, and this is sigma t plus one. So now I've reduced it. My reduced thing has zero here, and is only up to up to this point. So I've reduced the norm of this vector. Well, I've, I've only shrunk it. So we only have that reduction step of the Well, the insertion step is, is right here, where I process this point. I'm inserting it into, into this matrix, and I get, I'm going to get this, uh, this, this, this new matrix Q plus. So this is the insertion step. 
So this PI could be pushed to, so you could think of this PI as not being exactly on any one of the counters. It's on a bunch of the counters. Right, so, so, so what I could have done instead, I could say this Q has this subspace defined by, let's see, defined by this, uh, this V, right? And I can look at each of these directions and I can project PI onto each of these directions. They're orthogonal. And I increase each of these directions proportional to the, to the um, I do VI prime is going to be um, VI, um, so which is, is, is uh, actually, so VI is going to be the same direction, but sigma I prime, which is along this, is going to be VI, which is in our, with a unit vector, um, times VI dot, um, let's use J here. times pi. So this is this new point. This is the projection onto this direction, which is one of the directions I'm caching. And um, so it's, it's going to be plus the old sigma j. So I have the old sigma j plus the amount point pi, pi is, is contributing to, to this vector. I could have done this for all of the, all of the t vectors I have stored in Q for all of these sigma j's. And then I may have a little bit left over. And this leftover becomes um, v t plus 1 and sigma t plus 1. Now, that's not going to be the optimal SVD, though. That may not be the optimal way to sort these sigma values. <coughs> so I, I want to choose, I want to sort them in a way that's, that's more optimal. So I, instead of doing that, I just look at this matrix, I run the SVD, and I get slightly different, um, I'll probably get slightly different value of V. The orthogonal matrix will be slightly rotated a little bit towards maybe the, maybe towards PI. And so the sigma TI plus one will probably be even smaller than it was if I had done this procedure. So that's a, maybe a more intuitive way of viewing it. But the SVD is doing some magic under the hood to optimize this a little bit. But again, the SVD is going to be kind of expensive and it's going to lead to this t squared term in here, which you might want to try and get rid of. So if you can avoid using an SVD, you might be able to get this to be n over t um, instead, which would be n over epsilon, which would, which would be a, a better runtime. Um, so it's actually the n over epsilon, you still have to process the matrix, so it would be plus n times so it might be dominate just the linear the size of the matrix. Okay, so uh, this we so excited we uh, ran over time. Um, right, so so, um, so this so the sort of things I mentioned now, these are so if you're using data, um, the first thing you want to do is probably to try and run the SVD itself in, in whatever language you're using. It's built into Python and all sorts of things like that. It's just like a sci-fi as a package um, or MATLAB or whatever. If, if those don't fit because either you don't have the interpretability or they don't scale well enough, then you may consider looking into these things. And these are going to be more complicated. You're going to have to do it on your own. Um, you know, instead of just using a package, but they may give you some, some nice advantages for um, speed size and runtime. Is the Liberty 2012 based on the numbers? Yeah, it's the thing I link to off the web page, so it's the archive paper. It hasn't been published yet, but it's been on the archive for like a year.